Hello everyone, my name is Tim Liebrecht and I'm here today to speak with you about industrial gases for the hemp processing industry. My role at Air Products is I'm the industry manager for cryogenics and I think there's a lot of information here that I've got for you today that you're going to be quite interested in because a lot of things, well, there's been a number of questions around well, what are industrial gases and what are they doing in the hemp industry? So I can tell you, I'm going to talk about what those things are. I'm going to talk about safety, how they can help with efficiency, how they can help with product quality. And lastly, if you've got safety and efficiency and quality, you're going to have increased profitability. So before I get started, I want to say two thank yous. I want to say first, thank you to the Hemp Industries Association for this opportunity to speak. And thank you for joining us here today, because I think the information I have to share will be quite useful to you. What I want to talk about is industrial gases and cryogenics. What do those words mean? What gases am I talking about? And then as we talk about that, the expertise that Air Products has would certainly come into play. So who is that as a company? The benefits that these gases can pose to your industry, where, where we're doing research, what new technology, new items we're bringing to bear. And lastly, I think the items you don't want to miss is how each one of these gases go into specific applications that you may or may not be already doing today. But if you're not, I want to, you want to listen to these because there's certainly some new ideas and new approaches that will go into your use in, in the future. So as we get started, what is nitrogen? What is carbon dioxide? These are these two gases. We do refer to them as industrial gases. And I know that you've heard that term before, but what does it mean? Why are they used in, in the hemp industry or why could they be used? Well, both first are known for being inert. Inert means they, they won't react, that you can put them in and they will do various different jobs, but they should not react within your process. Secondly, they're extremely cold, they're cryogenic. And a cryogenic, we're gonna define that in a slide or two, but um, the benefits of that cold temperature uh, and how cold it will be, will be very important. Each one of these gases requires unique storage and handling equipment. They also have some unique safety requirements and, and how they're handled and handling them correctly are very important. And then lastly, you might be wondering, well, it says industrial, how clean are these particular gases? Well, here at Air Products, we do have technology allowing us to manufacture them and to purify them to standards in, for the food and for the pharmaceutical industry. And we've been doing this for decades and decades so we can help you use them, not just safely and efficiently, but also use the right gas or the right material that will be safe for your end customers. So as we start, cryogenics. What does cryogenic mean? An easy definition, it's a temperature of less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So what use is that going to be? Well, let's look first at the difference between the two, whether you're nitrogen or CO2. And these are not at a, because I know CO2 in some uses can be super critical. This is not a super critical use. We'll talk about that later. Nitrogen has a boiling point of negative 320 degrees. CO2 has a boiling point of negative 109. Both those are Fahrenheit. If you're looking at Celsius, so nitrogen is negative 195 and CO2 negative 78. So the ability of harnessing those temperatures, the ability of, of the harvesting, the inertness of that really provides some unique opportunities. It's unique in various industries, whether you're in the foods, pharmaceutical, chemical, et cetera. In this case, for the hemp industry, it can improve, uh, the inertness can certainly improve your safety because many of you are using flammable materials such as ethanol, butane, other uh, flammable type of use so it can help with your safety. I also know that there's, especially this time of year is where in the harvest season, molds and mildews can become very much an issue. So it will hinder those or stop it completely. You can rapidly cool material to optimize extraction or purification in the winterization process. And we can also achieve higher production rates as we use that temperature to speed up reaction processes or to speed up purification. We're looking to improve product quality and enable a sustained and planned manufacturing process. 
so that you don't have to work 24 hours a day during the harvest season. And then as you go six months into that, you're, you're working a much more, uh, a shorter day. If we could level that out over the whole year, there's optimization that can happen. So cryogenic gases and nitrogen and CO2 can both assist in those areas. So let's talk about nitrogen first. And the question is, well, where do you get nitrogen? Isn't nitrogen in the air we breathe? And that answer is yes. Nitrogen is in the air we breathe. Nit uh, the air includes 78% nitrogen, roughly 21% oxygen, and a much smaller amount of argon. Here at Air Products, we specialize in the ability of separating those gases and then putting them into a form where we can transport them from our facility to your facility. So as we look at this page that I have here, you see the Air Products portion is on the left. On the right-hand side is, that's your facility. So what we at Air Products do is we would then work with you, understand what it is that you wanna do with that product, and then put a liquid tank there that is designed around, are you going to use it as a liquid? Are you going to use it as a gas? What's the flow rate you're going to use? And then we would put that equipment there on site so that you would have the ability of using it in a very safe and efficient way. And so that illustrates, we want this tank to be outdoors, shows a photo of here of going in and using this as either a gas or a liquid. So let's talk then carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a little bit more challenging. And the question around where does that come from? Well, it's a byproduct of many different processes. Probably the most common is ethanol, followed by ammonia, and then anything in the hydrogen production or um, various different wells that have it available. Um, so as you can see, there's a, this one has a more diverse approach. And it also is somewhat of a challenging gas because it's a, it's a known greenhouse gas component. And the question is, all right, why CO2 in this industry? Well, it's a way of, being, of creating a, a positive out of a negative. At Air Products, we champion ourselves on thoughts on how do, we, how do we turn a negative into a positive? And here we've got a very positive use of carbon dioxide. And again, we do all this separation and, and, and um, safety pieces and, and put it into our trucks and deliver those to your facility. And at your facility, again, there's gonna be a tank outdoors. It's gonna be a little bit higher pressure, but we'll put that, we'll decrease that pressure before you use it and then send that in for various different applications. And we're gonna talk in a little bit about what applications are going to use that and then how to do it more safely. Here's a good time to talk about Air Products as a company. We are a global provider for industrial gases. There's only a few global providers out there. And here at Air Products, we are focused on many, many different industries and many different gases. In this circumstance, I would just wanna to talk today about nitrogen and, and CO2. But um, if you're seeing other trucks rolling down the road with our uh, picture on it, you're gonna see hydrogen, you're gonna see argon, um, and many other gases as well. Here at Air Products, our number one job, our number one focus every day when we go to work is safety. Maintaining a safe workplace is a fundamental and moral responsibility. And we take that, we take that message very, very seriously. And what we believe is that 100% of accidents are preventable. The only acceptable goal is zero accidents and incidents. We strive for that every day. At Air Products, safety is a condition of work. And we do that not just our safety, but we're interested in your safety. And many of the applications, many of the uses that we want to talk about and believe that need to be considered are safety um, in nature. And as we talk about those, we're leveraging the expertise I talked about. As we have supplied products to the chemicals industry, the refining industry, pharmaceuticals, food and beverage, um, water treatment, many of those areas are hand in hand with hemp processing. So we're, the reason we're really here to talk about is we've created so many technologies over the years that have optimized and been used in those particular industries and have really done step change optimizations and now we can use those in this new hemp processing industry. 
as well as develop new. So it's a mix that we're that I'm going to be talking about here shortly, a mix of established technology and some new that are that are going to be making a difference for you. So here's a map and I'm not going to go into details on this map. But the, but the message here is we are where you are. As Air Products, we've got plants all over the United States. I've not included the rest of the world, but we also have plants throughout the world. Um, so if you're viewing this webinar from outside of the United States, I encourage you to, to keep watching because we do have opportunities there. But in the United States, we are where you are. And as far as quality and standardization, I, I did want to mention here because so much of what the food and the pharmaceutical industries uh, are part of is not just very high purity, but also traceability, quality processes, and that we are meeting the GRAS and also the CGMP requirements are a big deal. Um, any place for the US FDA or federal country equivalent, we're following those regulations. We must comply with those and nitrogen and CO2 are analyzed and have traceability back to specific lots, specific details on a batch basis so that you have the ultimate flexibility of knowing where did that nitrogen or where did that CO2 come from. We've done this for decades from the pharmaceutical and food industry and we can then deliver it to you in the hemp processing industry very effectively. As we look at technology, and this is really the key as to where we wanted to move forward. We're not just doing it ourselves, Even though we've done a lot over the years, we are working with various laboratories, various universities. At Air Products, we do have a cryogenics R&D area. We've got a full-scale food test lab and a cryogenic applications lab where we can do grinding, where we can bring hemp in and understand is there an opportunity to preferentially take trichomes off of that and then process just that and not have the biomass? Are there other areas involved such as um, working with the University of Virginia? We've got a cold chain approach of the better, of, of really what is the difference of CBD versus CBG work in using a cold chain? So there's a lot of things we've got working, but the message here is you've got the full arsenal of an air products R&D team, and you also have the relationships that we have developed with various universities where we can help bring established technology, prove it out to you in a laboratory environment, and then take it into the field, and then also work with cutting edge universities on, uh, on specifics. We do have a partner listed here. There was a recent press release I would encourage you to look for, uh, where we're working with the University of Virginia. So uh, that's one example. Um, there are others, but I've just listed that one today. So here now is the part that you really wanna pay attention to. I wanted to jump into the areas here where we enhance areas in the hemp market. Um, we're looking at greenhouse growth, um, supercritical CO2. We're looking at packaging using those, nitrogen or CO2, biomass processing, extraction and purification. All those type of areas, industrial gases can bring betterment. The benefits, I highlighted a few early on, but we're talking higher yields, stronger plants from a greenhouse standpoint. In supercritical extraction, we're looking at purity, solventless concepts. Um, we're also looking at preservation and quality, efficiency, shelf life enhancement, all those type of things at, at, a, at a very high level. And now we're gonna get into more specifics. Let's start first early on in the phase, the growth phase. Now we don't do anything in, in the fields for many types of, of um, growth of hemp, but we are able to supply items to greenhouses. CO2 into a greenhouse is a way of increasing yield and growth. Photosynthesis is a process where the chemicals are using highlight and they turn CO2 into sugars. So as we look at, well, where does a industrial gas, where do we come into play? It's that CO2 supplementation. We've got the, uh, the ability to not just supply the CO2, but to work with individuals is, well, how do you put the CO2 into that facility? What concentrations are safe? What concentrations 
actually magnify the growth versus hinder the growth or really not have any effect. So our technology team is there and can help in, that, in those lights. As far as biomass handling and preservation, I'd say here is likely where we have seen the most difference to date. Um, I don't know if you've seen or heard this in your locality, but we actually have been doing flash freezing using tunnel freezers that have been used and, and have been made for the foods industry. It's a faster alternative to either hanging in air or mechanical drying processes. This allows the hemp and I'm going to have a, a short video here shortly and you can see it. But what I, I want to tell you what you need to look for. We're actually in this photo, we're, we're putting the hemp onto a, 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 um, a conveyor belt that's going to flow through this tunnel freezer. Um, we're using a 20 foot tunnel freezer here that will process between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds per hour. Whether nitrogen or CO2 is used, we do have some flexibility. The, the unit that we're going to show here in the picture is, is a nitrogen unit. And um, we have successfully frozen hemp during the 2019 harvest, but you may say, oh, that was last year. Well, that was, we were just trying it out. This year in 2020, I've got active projects in multiple parts of the country in different areas with a number of different um, tunnel freezers going simultaneously. I believe the largest one that we're entertaining now is up over 5,000 pounds an hour. So where I wanna highlight here is, this is where we've got some unique technology, unique concept. Um, this is the first time I do wanna point you to a specific means of getting information from us. At airproducts.com slash hemp, we call that our knowledge center. And at that knowledge center, there are data sheets, there are videos, there are um, customer testimonials. There's a lot of information there. So I'd encourage you to look at that. Here's an example of something you may see. Now I'm going to click on the screen here and if technology works, it's gonna to go to a video. Let's see how this works. Did you know industrial gases can help improve the harvesting and processing of industrial hemp? The same air products gases that have been used safely and successfully for over 60 years in the food and pharmaceutical industries can also be used by hemp processors to improve the quality and yield of their product. Gases such as ultra-cold liquid nitrogen and related equipment like our tunnel freezers can help make your production process more efficient. Flash freezing your harvest prior to storage prevents mold and locks in the plant's rich chemical content. During the grinding process, adding liquid nitrogen to the conveyor can eliminate oil stickiness that causes clogging and subsequent downtime. And when cold extracting, liquid nitrogen can be more efficient removing the desired oils all resulting in improved quality and yield. Talk to us and work with our application experts to review your process and identify opportunities. We have a state-of-the-art applications lab to test your product or we can visit your site for field testing. Let's work together to improve your hemp production process. Visit our website for more information. here. Okay, that is a great example, I'd say, of our flash freezing technology. And you can see it there in action. Um, as I said, we've, we can, the typical uh, size is about 1,000 to 1,500 pounds an hour for a 20-foot tunnel freezer. If you need to do more, we would go to a longer freezer. Because it's all about speed of that conveyor and the residence time inside of it. I do want to take a second here to talk about, well, what do you do once you freeze it? Because you do the tunnel freezing, and then what it does is we want to work, you want to put that material right into a refrigeration truck. Because when you flash freeze it at such cold temperatures, you're essentially encapsulating everything in it. So it's not a means of drying, but it is a means of preservation and isolating any issues from, we had talked about the molds and the mildews, and 100% of the CBD or CBG or the terpenes, whatever is in that material when you flash frozen it will still be in it 
when you go to process. So after it leaves the, the tunnel freezer, you're gonna probably wanna put this either in direct cold storage or in a refrigeration truck until you get the cold storage. And in this circumstance, cold storage means zero degrees. It doesn't mean you need to go to cryogenic numbers, but it's not just a refrigeration, it's a freezer type temperature. And a typical cold storage warehouse type company can work for you in that light. Here's a photo or a picture of what these tunnel freezers are. And you can see that there is a loading table here on the left. Um, there's nitrogen that is put in, in the, uh, the center portion of that. And there are fans within it that are spreading that temperature throughout. So it's an even, evenly cooled. So there's some high voltage, some low voltage and exhaust um, that are with that. As I said, we sell this routinely into the foods industry. And now it's been, uh, as we're moving this into the hemp processing industry, we've done both sales and we've also done some um, one, two or three month temporary leasing type programs. So I'd encourage you to contact your air products representative if you're interested in this and see, hey, what can we do for you in the amount of hemp that you're processing and also the, um, the types or you, if whether you're doing a CBD, whether you're doing a smokable bud or some other types of, of hemp units. Also, as we talk about handling, um, I did want to take opportunity to talk about modified atmospheric packaging. This is a CO2 or a nitrogen or a blend uh, of both of those. And the way this works, it's not truly where you need to then isolate the temperature at, at very cold. You're actually using the inertness um, where you're safely packaging either flowers or biomass with oils and we're all around preserving and preserving with quality in that if you don't have the oxygen present, the molds and the mildews are not going to have the oxygen for, for growth or oxidation. So you're inherently increasing shelf life and quality. So both of these, whether you be flash freezing or whether you be doing modified atmosphere packaging, what this allows is for you to expand shelf life take the time and process this appropriately up front, and then give yourself the ability uh, after it's been in storage or um, for, it could be for a number of months. Uh, we've not looked at number of years, but if you could store it throughout the, the entire calendar year and then operate at an eight hour a day, a 12 hour a day, um, a five day a week, whatever type operation your manufacturing setup allows, you can level load your facility much more efficiently and much more effectively. Now, as we get into that facility, that processing facility, there's three different ways I want to talk about because there, there's several. First is a CBD oil extraction, where we're looking at using nitrogen and CO2 in some different ways, and then also seed and fiber in those areas, we're doing something different. We're not really looking at the extraction process, but we're looking at cryogenic grinding and how do you use that cryogenics to actually allow those seeds and fiber to be handled more efficiently, more effectively. Let's start with extraction. Extraction techniques could be cold ethanol, could be supercritical CO2, butane or heptane, or some others. Um, there's, a, there's a number of items out there. Uh, there's even a few where they're trying to be somewhat solventless. Industrial gas can help improve many of these processes, especially when you're talking extraction or purification. Let me do this. All right, as far as CO2 goes, we're talking supercritical or subcritical CO2. This is, is actually the reactant. I had said before CO2 and nitrogen were inert. Well, they're inert at their more natural vapor pressure stages. CO2 can become a solvent, but you've got to take it up to a supercritical pressure. And that pressure temperature combination is so very important. A high pressure boost is an area that air products can help. Many processors or technology providers in this industry, they ramp the pressures all the way up to the supercritical, which is well over a thousand, could be a few thousand PSIG. But many of them start, they need the starting point of the CO2 to be 900 PSI. We don't store that, no one stores 
a CO2 at 900 PSI, it's a lower pressure. So there's a pressure boost technology, could be pumps, could be some other type of things that go, that could take place. And there's also the replenishment. CO2 can be recycled into these processes and, and many of the technology firms will talk about recycling and how not so much CO2 needs to be made up. We've been finding in the majority of those that we serve, there's roughly a 15% makeup at minimum, could be more. And so we will continue to replenish with fresh CO2 at that, at that usage rate. I also wanna comment here that Air Products does have a supercritical CO2 laboratory with our European team, and we can make uh, use of that in, in many circumstances. As we get into extraction uh, as a different unit operation, I wanna talk about the coal. The cold of liquid nitrogen specifically in this circumstance because CO2 is cold, but it's not quite cold enough to do what we need to do to make um, the extraction and then the winterization portion do what you need to do more effectively. Cold ethanol extraction is one where we've heard many people, they kind of stop at about minus 40 degrees C or minus 40 degrees F. They tend, they're the same temperature as, as um, both um, the uh, both of those temperature ranges cross over at that point. Important temperature range though is well, what happens if you could go to minus 80 degrees C? And once people start to look at that and to say, wow, the purification side or the ability to process extraction at that colder temperature, it brings a whole new set of opportunities to them. So mechanical chilling being limited to minus 40 is really can hinder getting up into those next level of, uh, of optimization. Our air products team is ready to either provide you with colder temperatures than minus 40, either directly from liquid nitrogen or working together with a mechanical chiller. So maybe a mechanical chiller would only cool ethanol down to say a zero degrees C, a minus 10, a minus 15. And then we could take the liquid nitrogen, which remember was was well, under, was it negative 195 C, I want to say, um, really can cool it down to those colder temperatures. Minus 80 C is a good limit because as you get colder than that, the ability for the ethanol to, to work is, is somewhat limited because its viscosity starts to increase. But anyway, the, eth the cold ethanol and extraction is, is a great area and we do have heat exchange technology that allows quick movement of the ethanol starting point into those colder temperatures. Cryogenic conveying is, uh, is an area that I wanna mention here as well. Um, if you're ever interested in both the ethanol and the biomass meeting in the extraction chamber at nearly the same temperature, we can do that. Cryogenic conveying here is the same unit that we have used in our cryogenic grinding technology for a number of years. Uh, and it's a means of conveying either biomass or other type of materials um, into an extractor in this case or into others at a, at a very controlled temperature. We already have cryogenic designs for this where we can manage and control those temperatures very, very precisely. So those are an area that, that could be of interest. Um, so specifically a cryogenic conveyor, we have equipment available and then also as far as that cold ethanol extraction or winterization, um, we will have uh, a heat exchange system that we could speak to you about that could be quite interesting for you. And with that heat exchange system, um, we certainly want to talk winterization. Um, extraction is one area where colder temperatures can show a betterment. I actually believe winterization is an area that could actually do an even better job. Winterization here is a means of purification. Um, following extraction, whether it be supercritical CO2 or ethanol, and it's a means of really isolating those fats and lip lipids. New heat exchangers here um, that we're in mid-development with and we'll have ready very, very shortly will allow um, ethanol temperatures or winterization temperatures down to that minus 75 or minus 80 degrees C range. Now, as we get into, I said we led with safety. Um, I wanted to keep that as a focus here as well, whether it be processing in, uh, in extraction or winterization 
whether it be in the uh, biomass handling following harvest, we are certainly focused on safety here at Air Products. Inert gases like nitrogen are used due to that inertness. Um, nitrogen is more common in a blanketing type world or an inerting world than what CO2 is, but both would work. So if you had one on site, I'd encourage you to explore the use, um, especially if you've taken a liquid product and used it for its refrigeration criteria, you're going to get the gas. So then using the gas in a, in a way of capturing that or getting it to a pressure that's focused on the, on the blanketing side will be very, very simple to do and very inexpensive. Um, I've often referred to as blanketing and nerding as the most inexpensive uh, insurance policy you'll ever get. And an area like this is one where you definitely want to pay attention if you're using ethanol, if you're using butane or propane or heptane, any of the flammables. Um, I've read a number of places over the past year where hemp processors have had either significant fires, explosions or whatnot, and they hinge from not really paying attention to those flammable vapors. Blanketing is an area where we can help with that and uh, we really encourage you to explore that and explore that with us um, here at Air Products. I mentioned before we were talking about fiber and seed. This is a whole different area than those of you looking to, to do CBD or CBG type manufacturing. Cryogenic grinding is an area where you actually can unleash items that you wouldn't have before. Um, traditional uses of hemp, whether they be seed or oil, herd or fiber, um, cryogenic grinding work is, it really opens new doors. Benefits of, of cryogenic versus ambient really shows of well, how can you unlock that oil content. We have worked with um, some of our current customers in areas such as um, fish farming and fish feed using the oils and proteins within hemp seed are actually preferable because they have buoyancy criteria that other, other foods do not. So if you can then go through and do a cryogenic grind and get things down to very, very small micron levels, um, then, we can, then that can be better incorporated. Consistent particle size is another area. Um, dialing in that right temperature, getting the right consistency of whether it be protein, or whether it be the oil content that you're after, uh, the use of a cryogenic, cryogenic temperature range allows the standard deviation also to be shrunk and really dial into what that would be. So the oil, you can see on the right-hand side in some of these pictures, this is a trial apparatus that we had set up. We're taking the seed, which is in more of the center, and then you can see on the right-hand side, oil has built up on that particular um, unit as it was really sending it through, that just told us not cold enough. So we needed to dial in that temperature on the test unit a little bit colder. We put another 20 or 30 degrees with that and that particular screen was clear and the, uh, the particles flew, uh, just went right through it. To know what is the right temperature and what is the right approach, I talked about this being a test unit. Uh, we have a full-scale cryogenic grind lab in our, our, our corporate facility in Pennsylvania. We're more than happy to work with any hemp grinders, whether it be for herd or for fiber or for any of the oil seed work that's been done. We're, we're currently right now working with another university here in the Mid-Atlantic on a herd and fiber grind project. So hopefully in the next um, few months or the next year, there'll be some periodicals or some papers come out with specific details on that. Here's a quick illustration of what does a cryogenic grind process look like. If you had oil seeds, for example, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the bin where the product feed would go in. So we would then have the ability uh, to send that material through that hopper and into the cooling conveyor. Now here's where the, the information and really the, the air products know-how comes through. That cooling conveyor is the unique part. Getting the right throughput, getting the right temperature, the right speed. So what you're doing is getting the right amount of time, the right residence time inside that conveyor. So you're delivering, could be seed, could be herd, could be 
whatever type of particles into the grinding mill, you're setting that mill up for success. And using the cooling conveyor and the ability to control the throughput and the temperature by controlling the speed of the auger, by the amount of liquid nitrogen that's going into that, um, that's what we do. That's what we work with at Air Products. And the majority of the time, that's why we do so many trials with our cryogenic grinding so that we can get it just right. Because you don't want to be grinding it the absolute coldest temperature of liquid nitrogen. You're going to go through way too much nitrogen. How do we get you to the right spot? How do we optimize what you're doing? That's, that's the core. That's the message. And I think that is the message that we want to really leave you with here is how do you optimize? How do you use the latest technology that's available? How do you really build upon, um, stand on the shoulders of those who have come before you and be in, in that's why I say this could be done very quickly. So with their products, um, I'll speak for myself as the industry manager here in the cryogenic space. I've got individuals throughout the United States that work for me and that we are standing ready. Uh, we're ready to work with you. We're ready to show you ideas, talk about product lines, hear about your process. What are your challenges? What is the size of your reactors? What, pro what abilities, what, what areas within this really can help, can we help optimize or make sense? Doing so, again, we want to increase your safety. We want to increase your efficiency. We want to increase your quality of your product. All of those by technology, whether we're creating it new, whether we're doing anything with existing technology, my team and myself, we know those. And if we get those right, you're going to increase your profitability. So I want to steer you here. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you for allowing me to speak, but also steer you again to our Air Products Knowledge Center and the ability to contact us. So we are uh, at airproducts.com slash hemp. And uh, as we show here, airproducts.com slash hemp. Um, you can reach myself. You can reach individuals that work for me and our sales team as well. So please note, um, we do want to show that as we work with individuals in this space, we will be looking for compliance. Um, we can't just talk to anybody. We'll be made, looking for com that, that show compliance with the applicable state and federal laws. Everybody has to do it that way right now. So I thank you for your time. And I ask that you would take this information and um, contact myself, contact my team, contact Air Products, and we stand ready to work with you to increase your safety, your efficiency, your quality, and in turn, your profitability. Have a great day. I look forward to hearing from you.